May 8th, 2020. This is Nerd Bourbon episode 153. I'm Seth Sturgill. And I'm Todd Sturgill. Todd, it's another fun-filled week. Is it fun? Another fun-filled week of fighting off the dreaded coronavirus. <laughs> and uh, more so than that, though, depression. Fighting off depression. That's all I have. It's the never-ending battle. I mean, this uh, this whole COVID shit doesn't help. The, the, the problem. The, the never-ending battle to which the only escape is in our dreams, Todd. See, or I don't. I don't dream. Really? I don't dream. Like you? Well, I mean, you do dream. You just don't remember your dream. I mean, I don't. I, I never remember anything. So I just go with I don't dream. When's the last time you remember having a dream? Uh, like dead ass. Probably like eight years ago. Oh god, you remember what it was? No. Uh. Again, the only dream that that I remember. Was like it's one where my face melts off. <laughs> it's about it. Okay. It was. It's not like a disturbing melt off. It's more of like just my facial features melt off. I was. Uh, that's we- that's even more disturbing. I think than your physical flesh melting off. That to me <laughs> sounds more disturbing. No, it's not that disturbing. I mean, the actual flesh doesn't melt off. Just the facial features. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fucking worse. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. Let's go uh, up from there. Corona update, Todd. Where am I now in the Corona update? Oh yes, yes. I am now wearing a mask when I work. Yeah, I'm gonna have to join that train pretty soon too. Now, here's the deal. I I'm not gonna say this. I'm not gonna say where I work, so I'm not get. I don't get in trouble here. But. <laughs> I work overnight, so they're, I'm going to be honest, we're a little more lenient on that shit, because I'm going to be honest, I can't work technically, really work with it, because I can't breathe in it worth shit. But obviously, I start early enough to where I have to. So, like, the moment the store closes, that shit is off. You feel me? Well, as long as you're not putting, like, other people in danger and shit like that, that's really what it's about, right? Shit, they put me in danger. <laughs> <laughs> you're essential. You're a hero. I, I, I genuinely, can I be honest with you? I genuinely, I've been thanked, and I thought it was hilarious. It's You're like, like I mean, I mean, I'm getting paid. <laughs> like, I'm just doing my job, honestly. Like, don't, there's no need to thank me. Uh, uh, after this shit's over with, you're going to go back to telling me to go fuck myself. Right. And, and again, you're you're not like a, like a fucking nurse or something. It's, those are the people that need to get thanked. Regardless, though. I, uh, it's, you know, it it is just funny because I, the quarantine, I guess, or whatever is currently scheduled to be lifted where I live on the 15th. I think mine's like the end of the month. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if it gets extended again, but here's my thing. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be shocked if it gets extended. And I also, again, it's not going to be a full opening. It's just going to be, no, 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 no. I know for a fact there, I think my shit's in phases essentially. Yeah, everybody is basically yeah. like uh, Texas recently reopened on May first in phases though. Like you can go inside of a restaurant, but it's only like twenty five percent capacity or something like that. It's very limited. I saw, shit. I saw, I saw some shit about like uh, people um, having to like serve themselves in a way. Yep. To yep. where like yeah, they'll like put it on a serving tray and then they'll walk off and you had to grab your own shit. Which here's can I be honest with you? There's some of this shit I'm like, keep it. <laughs> Just keep it. Keep the human interaction away from me. Can I be honest with you? I, this, the realization is like, God, I hate people. Just keep, <laughs> keep, keep, keep me away from them. <laughs> Fuck. Like, con- dude, the contactless delivery, I just look, it's like, just leave that it on the table. That is nice. Leave it on the table. I just look at them through the window. <laughs> <laughs> you stare at them through the window that looks out to your front porch. 
Leave it on the table and walk away. (laughs) (laughs) It's like no bullshit small talk. Just leave my food and be on your way. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of when I I was telling Anastasia because they have the they have those Ubers where you can pay a little you can pay like an extra like five dollars oh, for yeah, really like talk to you. yeah for like no talking I'm like dude that's worth it to me <laughs> that's so fucking worth it I, I hate especially if it's like a long Uber ride I fucking hate the small talk I just respect anyone that doesn't even try to talk to you on that in that shit like oh no I other, love it other than like I, I again I'm not gonna say I hate all small talk but it's just like come on oh, I I hate pretty much all small talk like the second we start talking about the weather i'm like what are we doing <laughs> the the, the <laughs> one that again uh shit i wish we could have paid that motherfucker in uh san antonio to show holy <laughs> moly we were talking about that recently we were kind of reminiscing on that recently holy shit i again me and anastasia were just dead ass like keeping each other sane in that fucking group chat he was one of the drivers that was driving our shuttle to and from the convention in the hotel. Oh my I, god! I know more about that man's life than I should. More than more than anybody wants to know. It was so bad. I I was just sitting there. You guys, you guys avoided it all. At least you guys had each other. I was alone in that battle. Right. <laughs> you, you were just you were just <laughs> taking it bro, blow by blow. I was the social tank. <laughs> the fucking social tank. Well, it was rough. I was taking some. Uh, I was taking some heavy DPS. Dude, it was in that so battle. Bad. That was rough, bro. And like you guys just sitting there, steady in the group in the Facebook group chat, talking mad shit. Oh, mad shit, mad shit. Like, dude, Anastasia was like ready to get out and walk. It was rough. I I, I hated it, and that th- that was a situation where I was like, I literally would have given that guy twenty dollars to shut up. I should have gave him a hundred. <laughs> fuck you, man. I'd be like, dude, dude here's twenty dollars. You just stop talking. Anyway, Todd, what have you been playing? Uh, so yeah, other than the same shit I've been playing, I'm trying to think if there's anything different. I don't think there has been. It's just been my daily Animal Crossing chores and Neo Two doing my uh, New Game Plus playthrough. I don't know if I've done anything else. Well, you have. First of all, we have to, we have two things to talk about, really. Oh, ultimately, Star Wars. Well, there's there's quite a bit. So, first of all, this this episode we got a lot of news to cover in this episode. But real quick, I wanted to talk about two things that you and I both got a chance to kind of mess with a little bit. Mm-hmm. The first of which we completely forgot last week to mention that we technically played the Ninjala beta, and technically I forgot about it again, which. <laughs> Which should basically tell you all you need to know about the Ninjala beta. <laughs> well, it wasn't good. I didn't <laughs> like it. I I was and what sucks is I was really looking forward to this game. But the beta first of all, the beta was fucking busted. It was a hot mess. Hot garbage. Just servers server meltage. Absolutely busted. What I did get in when, like when I finally was able to get in after the the time because you you know the beta was only up for hour an hour mm-hmm. increment at a time, so by the time it was finally fucking up and I was finally able to get in, I only had like fifteen minutes anyway. I was only able to play like two or three games. I didn't even I didn't even get that lucky. I was able to do the tutorial and that was it. Yeah, and this game is so. I understand that the game is chiefly designed for kids. Like it's very clear that that's kind of what they're going for here. But I think that the game has sacrificed a lot of skill in it, just in its core design. There's a really stupid mechanic where, you know, the game is very heavily melee based. Yeah, you know, that's that's basically the main shit. Like you're you're hitting each other, and if you parry an attack, you and your opponent literally go into like a rock paper scissors kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And that determines who actually gets the attack off. And there's no way to determine like what you what the opponent is like gonna do or whatever. It's not like in For Honor where it's sort of tell there's a way to telegraph your opponent's moves or something like that. Like For Honor does that right. You know what I mean? I still say to this day, I think For Honor's probably got the best like sort of like combat in that way. For like an online 
you know, online combat. And in, in terms of like, in terms of PvP melee combat, For yeah. Honor probably is the best. Yeah. They should have adopted something like that. Of course, it doesn't have like the weight of For Honor or something like that, but there's no, there's just no skill to it. It's completely luck of the draw. So that's really frustrating. I don't know. It, it, just kind of janky and like unpolished and a lot of like cosmetic stuff. Like you can already tell they're going to microtransaction the fuck out of this game. And it just, I don't know, it just kind of seems like it's a little bit of a gotcha, like, kind of free-to-play game to reel the kids in and get them to spend their parents' money a little bit. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting from this. And it just, it's kind of a bummer for me, because I was really kind of, I was feeling the art style, you know, I, I was like, this kind of reminds me of Splatoon a little bit, but kind of as a melee, like, PvP game, and I don't know, I was I was completely let down by this beta. Who knows? Maybe the full game will uh, will be different, but I don't really have an interest in playing it at this point. Yeah, it's kind of kind of kind of kind of died, kind of died with the servers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it comes out at the end of the month, and I mean, quite frankly, there's a lot of games that I'm interested in coming out this month, and mm-hmm. Ninjala is kind of at the bottom of that list. I, I really don't care. Another game that we both played of is Streets of Rage Four. Oh yeah, that did that 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 happened. That that absolutely happened, and Lord knows that was fun as fuck. The the game's awesome. We we played through now. I will I will say I will go ahead and say, uh, we we definitely had to crank that difficulty down. No, <laughs> I, I I'd like to tell that story. Okay. We well, again, we made we we were able to get to about like stage six. I was think I think it was stage six where we finally were like, oh fuck this. Yeah, we we got a good way. So there are twelve stages in the game, and I mean, really so, yeah. more like eleven and a half. So so we got to the halfway point essentially right. in the in the game, and it just shit took a shit took a dark turn with the with the difficulty there. Yeah, there was there's definitely a huge difficulty spike there on stage six, and it was that was an ass. There there was some ass beatings we didn't sign up for. <laughs> yeah. Well, we get to the point, like, we, we got all the way up to, like, the final boss, and, like, I, I think you were already dead at that point, and I was, like, yeah. sitting there trying to fucking fend him off by myself with, like, one life. Mm-hmm. That's what really kills it, I think, is the fact that... The amount of lives that uh, normal gives you. It's only, th- what, two? Uh, Well, it's technically, I think technically three. Yeah, it's I two think... respawns, and then your right. final, yeah, yeah. Right. Like, your original life and two respawns, essentially. And there are ways, you know, if you build up your score enough, there are ways to get additional lives. But it's kind of hard to do, especially when you're playing in co-op. Because it's like a double-edged sword. Because when you're playing in co-op, the the combo potential is obviously a lot greater because you share the same combo. But the potential for that combo to break is a lot greater, too. Because the other person might get hit or whatever. And, you know, Streets of Rage doesn't have any sort of guard or a block button Mm -hmm. or anything like that. Oh, Lord knows so, some enemies do, though. <laughs> oh, God. There are enemies that all just sit there and just fucking tank your entire We're combo. We're just sitting there, both of us, just wailing on the same motherfucker, and it's just like, lol, fuck you. Yeah, So, but anyway, we ended up, you know, we did end up throwing down the difficulty, and we did, yeah. we replayed the game. And we got to stage six again real quick. <laughs> and I'll tell you right now, it was like the best shit. Is, like, I, 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 I laugh thinking about it, is when we walked into the boss room, I'm like, we're back, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Beat that, that was a good ass. feeling. That was a really good feeling. I'm not Dude, it was. I, I, we got primal in that shit. Like some, we just wanted some vengeance, primal vengeance. Yeah, but so just to talk about just talking about the game a, a little bit because I really, I really did like it a lot. I had a really fun time playing it. It's a very arcadey experience. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I could recommend the game to most people at $25, which is the price of it, just because I think a lot of people are just going to blaze through it real quick and not really touch it again. It's not really that kind of game. It's, it's again, it's an arcade experience. It's very focused on, like, replay value. Like, they want you to play through that game story a ton of times, you know, just as if you're at an arcade cabinet. There's, like, a progression system where you can unlock various like pixel characters from the previous Streets of Rage games. I think the final reward is actually the uh, soundtrack from the original game, which is cool. 
so there, there's a little bit of a carrot on a stick there, and, and they definitely want you to, to replay the game. But I, I think for most people, they're just going to blaze through it and never touch it again, which is unfortunate because it's really fun. Mm-hmm. The combat, though, is sublime. Oh it's so good. Like, it is, bar none, the best, like, 2D brawler kind of combat system that I've played. It's so fun. I'm not like an aficionado or anything of this genre, but I've played, you know, several games in this genre and I've, and I've enjoyed Same. them. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm fairly familiar with the genre and this is by far my favorite take on the combat. It's just so fluid, man. It's like silky smooth. Dude, I fucking, the play style I had with uh, my boy Floyd. Ooh. Yes. Like just being able to grab that those motherfuckers. Oh. Yes. So that's basically... So You ended up, I I basically knew who you were going to end up picking because I got the game first. And the second I saw these new characters, like, well, Todd's going to play Floyd. (laughs) (laughs) I think I even mentioned that to you. You don't know me, bitch. I'm like, yeah, I do. You're going to (laughs) play Floyd. (laughs) So you're you're sitting there rocking Floyd. I'm playing another new character, Cherry, who's the daughter of fucking Adam Hunter from the old games. And her whole deal, you know, Floyd is big burly sort of like Samoan cyborg <laughs> mm-hmm. is that accurate yeah, yeah it's, that's pretty accurate and he has like his whole thing he's got the yeah, he's got the robotic arms and those ro- robotic arms allow him to do uh, electrical discharges essentially and uh, grabs from a distance right. and, and the combat what makes the combat so so silky I think is it's a very simple combat system that has some really smart ideas where it really the bulk of the combat is done with just two buttons. Yeah. Where, you know, you have your standard, like, punching attacks that, that goes into combos, but, and then holding that same button will do kind of a more powerful attack. Yeah. But then you have your special button, which will be, will, which will activate a different special ability depending on your position. So you're, if you're yeah. dashing with it, if you're stationary with it, or if you're in midair with it, you'll do a different version of your special attack, which is really cool. Oh my god, I just realized I don't think I've ever technically done a dash one with him. Well, he doesn't have a dash, right? But I'm, but here's the thing, though. I, I do technically have a dash attack, so I wonder, ooh. Is that some well, well, well. I might have, have to go to, check that out. Gonna have to go back and do that arcade play Because again, I do have do. a dash attack. That's the thing. I, I know for a fact, you, you've seen that dash. It's where I like, do that like both arms forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm, now I'm curious. Mm. Well, whatever the case may be, we, uh, so I, yeah, I played as Cherry Hunter and she was very, like, she was basically the polar opposite of your character. Yeah, fast Where and squishy. Fast, light, squishy, took a lot more damage and did a lot less damage and stuff like that. But she was, she was so much faster and she had, like, huge combo potential. I mean, I mm-hmm. was able to just pull off these like ridiculous combos it really worked out with like both their play styles i think they worked well together yeah and her whole deal with her special she has a guitar Mm -hmm. and uh her stationary is kind of like a kind of defensive like a kind of aoe that pushes people back and she does that 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 she has the standard dash attack which i enjoyed and i i made good use out of (laughs) Mm-hmm. And then she's got that aerial special where she just like slams the guitar down on him in midair. It, w- it was with when I realized about my aerial special is that I can just keep doing it. Yeah, you do that like ground pound thing. Yeah, and I can just keep I just keep bouncing. Yeah, so good. So the whole mechanic, and this is this is actually you know very typical of Streets of Rage, where spend you know using the special costs health. And the interesting thing about this one is they've kind of adopted a Bloodborne scheme where you can actually regain the health by playing the offensive and attacking people. Yeah, with with uh, with uh, if you get attacked while doing it, you will lose all that health, though. Right. So that was a really cool, I thought, innovation with Streets of Rage. Right. It, it all just works together. I, you know, some people have have complained about the art style. I think the game's gorgeous. Like, I really love the art style of the game. There are a lot of people who think that the art style like doesn't really work. I'm like, you guys are fucking crazy. I think the game's beautiful. I, I think a lot of people need to actually just see the game in motion before they pass judgment on the art. Oh, wait, are people still talking shit? Yeah, people talk. There are a lot of people who don't like the game's art style. I love it. I think it looks great. It's very clean. And by the way, playing with the pixel characters from the old games, 
like even that fits in perfectly well. And there are a handful of like retro stages that you can find and unlock and stuff like that. And those are really cool. I, I, I just thought it was a really solid. I mean, the story isn't anything to write home about, but you're not playing Streets of Rage for the story. You know what I mean? I, I just think it's really remarkable. This is what you have to understand about Streets of Rage 4 is like Streets of Rage 3 came out like fucking like 26 years ago or some shit. Like th- this series has been dormant for a long time. So for them to come back with Streets of Rage 4 and for it to be as good as it is, is to me super impressive. And I was I was happy to support that. Even if I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to everybody at the price, I it honestly has been one of my favorite gaming experiences of the year. I mean, I, I had a blast with it. And being able to play it in co-op, by the way, on Switch, this is one of the few games that makes use of the Switch's new like friend invite system. So that was kind of cool. Like the fact that you're able mm-hmm. to send me a proper friend invite. That is not typical of a lot of Switch games. So, so that was pretty neat. So anyway, I just, I don't know about you. I, I had a blast with the I game. I loved it. I, I loved it. Otherwise, I'm really similar to you. I've been playing just a lot of Animal Crossing as always. I'm nearing my 300 hour mark. Disgusting. By the time, yeah, by the time you're hearing this, I've probably passed the 300 hour mark. And uh, so that's a very real possibility. And I've also been replaying, because like I said, this is a fairly big month in terms of the games I'm interested in. There's a new Shantae game, uh, Shantae and the Seven Sirens, coming out at the end of the month. And uh, so I've been replaying the last one, Half Genie Hero, to kind of gear up for it. I picked up the Ultimate Edition on Switch. It has a bunch of DLC that I haven't played yet. And I've just been replaying that and, and just having a blast with it. The game is still super good. Shantae is kind of an independent series by way forward, but if you're a fan of like combat platformers, I, I love it. It's it's a great series, and they've got two of the I think four games are available on Switch. They're, they're, they they did like two like GBA games, and I think the rest of them are available on Switch, like Risky's Revenge and Half Genie Hero, and the new one coming out are all on Switch, and you and you can play that there. So highly recommend that series. It's it's like super good. But uh, that's pretty much all I've been doing, Todd. We've got a lot of news to cover this week, if you're ready to uh, receive it. No, uh, the show's over. No, <laughs> All right, bye, guys. No. There is a you're lot of news, You're fucking dunked man. on. No, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to let you start saying that from now on. No. A lot of news no, no. to cover, though. It, you know, it's funny. that going So get fucking dunked on, of course, has been a, a nerd bourbon staple catchphrase from the beginning. I want to bring up something else that's been a nerd bourbon staple from the beginning. Skate 4? Skate 4. Well, what? Is in the news this week. Um, it's not good news. No. <laughs> it's you not good news. You gave me hope for a second. Uh, yeah. yeah, you're like that Hawkeye, don't do that. Don't give me you hope. Bastards. You bastards. Ba- I'm reading it. You bastards. It's not good news. The skateboarder, are you familiar with Jason Dill? He's a skateboarder, yes. pro yeah. skater. Uh, he was on, I think, a podcast, a like a, a like skateboarding podcast. Uh, he was on this week, and he revealed a couple of things. First of all, he kind of just casually like revealed that there is going to be a new Tony Hawk game, which is coming this year, which is like the worst kept secret of 2020. Yeah. <laughs> Like, he actually was just, like, he just casually, he's just like, uh, Tony Hawk's putting out another game coming out this year. Because <laughs> <laughs> I guess he's going to be in it. But uh, on top of that, he revealed that EA actually reached out to him asking for his participation in a potential mobile version of Skate 3, of all things. So I've got a quote from him here. He says, quote, I got a call from the EA people about 10 months ago, and they said, hey, we want to talk about the Skate games. This woman emailed me and she said, basically, hey, Jason, we want to do a mobile version of Skate 3. And I wrote back and I said, what else? She wrote back, no, that's it. So I wrote back and I said, look, no big deal. No one wants your stupid mobile version of Skate 3. Make Skate fucking 4 already. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, you know, he was basically saying, like, just do it. Just make the game and participate again. You can't level it to the same numbers you get on other games. You do Skate 4 for a cultural thing that pays you back later. And that's how corporations can work if they play their cards right. My God. Skate 4 for the culture is the realest shit I've ever heard. 
<laughs> yes. So EA responded to him saying that they have no plans to pursue Skate 4. These bastards. To which he replied with the most perfect response, I think, possible. He goes, we'll have a lot of luck on Need for Speed 29. I won't be in your stupid mobile game. God bless. <laughs> God bless. I have nothing but respect. <laughs> but skate for the culture. Yeah. That's that's basically it. It's like you do it for the fans. You don't do it expecting to make a ton mm-hmm. of money. But you know what? EA is not about... I mean, EA is a company, obviously. They're, they're in it to make money. But there is something to be said about making the Taking cultural play. Yeah. yeah. Take that bite. And and this is the sort of thing that, as he said, this is the sort of thing that can pay you back later. Mm-hmm. This this is you got to ask yourself: What's more important? Is it money or is it mind share? Is it respect? Respect or money? What's more important? Respect brings the money. So closing out the conversation, Dill says, "Quote: I think the skate team at EA has done themselves a big disservice by not actually trying." I don't want to be on some mobile fucking gaming system. <laughs> Real shit. I hate mobile gaming. So, yeah, that that's essentially EA's like, yeah, we're not going to do Skate 4 properly, but we're kind of interested in bringing Skate 3 to mobile phones. Like, what? Fuck you. Literally nobody wants that. And every fucking EA-related stream ever is just, like, inundated with Skate 4 comments. So... Skate 4 has been a thing for like if you're in any you'd be watching a fucking Nintendo like stream yeah <laughs> so people are still saying Skate fucking 4 <laughs> I'm not saying that it would translate immediately to sales no but like I am saying that it's something that your fans clearly want and this is the sort of thing that would <sighs> pay dividends for you in the long run you know you know, there's probably people who I don't even know about Skate 4 that are listening to this right now, like my stupid ass doing the Skate 4 shit. Oh, right. That was a thing. That was, I mean, that's an important part of Nerd Bourbon history. Skate 4 yeah. is a thing. And this is a conversation, but, you know, Nerd Bourbon's three years old. Yeah. Like, this is a converse, this is an ongoing conversation that has been happening around Skate 4 for over three years. It didn't, it didn't, me doing it didn't last as long as I'd like, but it just, it got hard. It got harder to remember, and I got la- I started getting lazy with it. You still got to... I think you stopped around, like, episode 20 or something like that. Yeah. But you got to you gotta realize, think about that. That's half a year, almost. Yeah. Of working my, Skate 4 into the conversation. Oh, Lord. So. It was so fun. Dude, my favorite one... I, th- I still, to this day, my favorite one is that pizza one. That is the best one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you go back and listen to those early episodes of Nerd Bourbon, it's probably a little painful, but the, the, skate, the skate 4... Again, is an important part of Nerd Bourbon's history and always will be, so mm. cannot deny it. Uh, we're going to talk about EA a little bit later on in the show. We do have some some EA stuff to talk about, but first, I do want to have... There's a major correction that I have to address here from last week. We reported last week that kind of on the, the major story that everybody reported on, which was about The Last of Us 2 leaks. Last week on the show, it was reported that a disgruntled uh, ex-Naughty Dog employee was responsible for leaking major plot details and story cutscenes from The Last of Us Part Two as an act of protest against not being paid properly. Sony now says that it has identified the source of the leak and can confirm that these reports were completely false. So I've got a statement from Sony here that says, quote, SIE has identified the primary individuals responsible for the unauthorized release of TLOU2 assets. They are not affiliated with Naughty Dog or Sony. So they said they can't comment any further on the circumstances, but and they're they're going to continue to investigate. But essentially, you know, the short short version is it wasn't a naughty dog internal thing. It was literally just a hack. And from what we're hearing, there was some sort of weirdness going on where they were able to hack the servers of like an old naughty dog game and from there like access the local servers at Naughty Dog, I guess, somehow. And, and access the data that way. So, apparently that's what happened. It had nothing to do with the next employee or anything like that. Still really shitty. Still unfortunate that the game was leaked. I, by the way, the, the there's a new story trailer that they released this week for The Last of Us 2. And, uh, man, I can't wait for that game. It, it looks so good. 
I, uh, I, I know you were saying like, yeah, I watched the trailer and it just solidified a lot of shit that I know about it, mm-hmm. basically. But I, I can't wait, man. Can't wait. Can't wait to mm-hmm. actually sit and talk about it once we've both actually properly played the game. June nineteenth, Todd. Counting down the days. One day I'll play it. I still need to play Doom. That's true. You gonna are you gonna take care of Doom before you play The Last of Us? Or are you gonna not get The know. Last of Us at launch or what? I don't know what's going on, man. My life is a a, a shell. <laughs> <laughs> a shell of its former self. Well, you know what else is a shell of its former self, Todd? <laughs> Good segue. Segue. Uh E three. <laughs> oh shit, we got E three news again? Somewhat. So it's it's not really E3 related as much as it is the E3 replacement. So you know E3 2020, of course, it it was canceled several weeks ago due to uh, coronavirus concerns. But our old buddy Jeff Keeley is not going to let go of this summer. So Keeley announced via Twitter this week that he is spearheading Summer Game Fest, which is a four month digital event that he describes as being a blend of breaking news, in-game events, and free playable content, all from the comfort of your home. Uh, Summer Game Fest will run from May to August and already has secured commitments from dozens of major developers and publishers, including 2K, Activision, CD Projekt Red, Blizzard, EA, Microsoft, Sony, Square Enix, Valve, WB, and more. The extent of their participation has not been detailed, although... We did kind of learn that to the at the time of this recording, today's Xbox event was affiliated with Summer Game Fest, I suppose. So, And we're going to talk about that at the end of the show. Mm. But uh, apparently, Summer Game Fest is working with Steam, Xbox, and other, quote, unspecified platforms to bring players playable, limited-time demonstration and trial of select game content as part of the program. Mm-hmm. This includes the Steam Game Festival Summer Edition that Valve and Keeley organized, which will run from June 9th through 14th, which is the same week that E3 2020 was previously scheduled to take place. Now, this is really interesting because essentially Jeff Keeley is like, E3 is not happening. We're going to go for the whole summer, Summer Game Fest. We're going to have these little kind of mini digital events. And apparently they're going to make demos available of the upcoming games. I mean, we haven't seen that manifested yet. We haven't seen... I mean, we had the little Xbox presentation that we'll talk about later. And and I guess that was affiliated with Summer Game Fest. But otherwise, we haven't really seen... uh, It seems like the best is yet to come with this. But my question for you, Todd, is... Is this this an adequate replacement for E3 this year? I think so. Do you think this fills that E3 gap? Mm-hmm. It did feel a little E3-ish when we were watching the Xbox presentation. Oh, it did. Because there was moments of it being shit. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. This is a really, I think, interesting idea. I am looking forward to seeing more. I will, I like the idea of the demos, if that actually you know works out. Bringing it to the masses. Yeah, I think that actually is something that they've done in the past. Uh, I think it was only on Steam, though. Mm -hmm. I think they did like a cross-promotion with the Game Awards on Steam where it was like, hey, and you can play a demo for this game right now or whatever. It'll be really interesting to see if this works well. Uh, I think it could, you know, truly be the final nail in E3's coffin. if, If this takes off and this works as well as Jeff Keighley thinks it's going to, Coupled with all the other various digital events that these publishers are going to be doing, I just don't see how E3 is going to be viable. Everyone, just pick up their violins, start playing. Yeah. I, I just don't see how E3 is viable in 2021 if, if this thing works. So, anyway, uh, we'll see how it all goes. He did, during the live stream that we both watched today, he was sort of detailing the plans a little bit for Summer Game Fest and some of the things happening. It sounds like he's going to be announcing more, like, events in May, but, you know, looking forward to June and July. I, I know Xbox is going to be doing another presentation where they cover some some of their first-party titles. So it sounds like we're going to be getting some more news 
going forward. I think he even said that next Tuesday there's going to be a new game announcement. So, of course, we'll be covering that on the show next week, whatever that ends up being. So, it's interesting. And uh, and we'll talk about that Xbox presentation a little bit. But, interesting idea. Credit to Keeley. Keeley is definitely a hardworking industry vet. You got to give him credit where credit's due. He, he is an innovative dude. And fast thinking, it's not as if he, like, prepared, you know, this in advance. I mean, he must have... He must have really kind of put this together at the last minute. So, props. Props to him. Anyway. Uh, moving along, Platinum Games has announced that physical copies of the Wonderful 101 Remastered would be delayed due to production issues brought on by COVID-19. It's just an excuse. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's that, that, that catch-all excuse. No. Uh, The game is still on track for a May 19th release digitally, but the physical release of the game will now be taking place on June 30th. By the way, this is off topic, but this is kind of a dick dick move. But you do know it's like me and a a buddy from work have joked about that. It's like anybody that's dying from anything right now, from complications from the corona. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) There there was a little bit of controversy about that. It's like if, if anybody dies of anything, they're like, add it to the death toll. Well, because yeah, they get paid. They get paid for every death. Died from uh, natural causes. Pumping up those caused numbers. By compli- ca- caused by the complication. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Kickstarter backers of the Wonderful 101's physical version are getting a particularly shitty deal. Because Platinum announced to its backers that production of the Kickstarter exclusive physical rewards. So people who have got like the higher tiers that are getting like physical rewards along with their copies... They're going to be getting their game even later. It's not going to arrive until after its late June general release date. So to make up for it, these backers will be receiving free Steam codes for a digital copy of the game that they can play when digital backers get their early access codes on May 7th, which is 12 days before the general release date. May 7th, by the way, is the date that we're recording right now. I'm still waiting on my code. I still don't have a code, so... Jury's out on when those codes are going to get out. We'll see. But uh, but yeah, if you if you backed the wonderful 101 remastered at a high dollar tier, you're probably pretty pissed right now. I'm glad I didn't do it. <laughs> I backed it at the standard, and I'm just like waiting on my code. There you go. By the way, they they announced they were like, yeah, the backers uh, of the digital version are going to get their codes in April, and then April kind of came and went, and we're like, all right. And now it's May 7th, so it's uh, whatever. Anyway, moving along, Todd. This week did see Star Wars Day, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. And uh, we got a few little tidbits of Star Wars-related video game announcements. Mm. Oh, yes. So let's talk about some of this. I'll save the best for last, and I'll save the worst for first. For starters, TT Games revealed the key art for LEGO Skywalker Saga. Although somehow there is still no release date for the game. This is fucking bullshit. (laughs) This annoys me to no end, man. Like, the fact that they didn't have... They just showed us the box art. Like, that's cool and all, but there's no new trailer. There's no release date. You get nothing, boy. It's just... It's like nothing. It just kind of annoys me. I'm frankly... You You know, the more you want something, the more you're never going to get it. That's true. It certainly seems that way. But it, it, it just, I think they announced the game last year at E3, if not earlier than that. And all we have after all this time is some box art. I honestly, I would have predicted, if you had asked me like two months ago, I would have been like, yeah, they're probably going to have the game ready to drop on May the 4th. I thought May the 4th was going to be the release date. But no. Adorable. Nothing. Absolutely adorable. <laughs> we have not seen hide nor hair of the release date for this. I mean, I'm excited for the game. That's what frustrates me the most about it. You know the last time I actually played a Lego game? What's that? Was probably like the original like Lego Star Wars. It's been that long? Yeah. I played Lego The Force Awakens, and I think that was the last one I played. I'm I, telling, yeah, I, you know what? Here's the thing. I, just, I liked the original Lego Star Wars. I'm just like, eh. I've never really cared for them after that. Like, I just like never had any interest. 
I've played a lot of Lego games, but I have I not played them all, all. Essentially, oh, you've not played them all? No, 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 no. They've got some weird shit. They have like Lego Incredibles. Is is that a thing? That is a thing. They've got Lego like they they've done they've done some like weird kind of original games. Like I think the most recent one is Lego DC Super Villains mm. or something like that. There's like Lego Ninjago and Lego Jurassic Park, and they, I mean they've done a ton of games. The main ones I played was, yeah, Star Wars. I played the Harry Potter ones. I played Indiana Jones. Um, I think I might have dabbled in Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. What what really kind of burned me on the Lego games is when they moved away from the pantomime and they started actually including, like, voice clips from the movies. Yeah, it's kind of like I'm, I wasn't a fan of that whenever I, I would see, like, gameplay of it. That kind of killed it for me because I, I I thought it was actually pretty funny. Well, it, it had its own humor to it, you know. It was funny. Had, it was, yeah, it was funny with that. It had a certain charm with the with the pantomime that I think is a little bit lost when you start working in, you know, voice clips from the movies. I, I don't know, and it's a little bit weird to hear like the actual voices come. I think the first one that did that was maybe Lego Lord of the Rings, and it was just it was just kind of jarring. I, I don't know. It wasn't mm. my thing. There's still just great fan service games, though. I mean, credit where credit's due. The amount of like playable characters and the love and care that goes into the fan service of these games is pretty unparalleled. So I, I got to tip my hat. I am looking forward to Lego Skywalker Saga. Just I just can't believe we don't know more about it. Anyway, it was also announced that the popular VR game Vader Immortal will be making its way to PSVR this summer. So Todd, maybe it's time to dust off that PSVR you got uh, you got over there. It doesn't have dust. It's been still in the box. Oh God, it's not even out <laughs> of the box. <laughs> Damn. Damn, when, that's rough. You know, I'll be honest. I think the next time I have like a significant amount of time off, I might fuck with it. Hey man, I, I hear Vader Immortal is actually really good. So that might be What's something deal? to fuck What's with. What's the deal with it? I don't really know what the deal with it is, like, story-wise, but I think you're, like, fucking having lightsaber battles and shit with Vader. I don't I don't know what the issue... What, I haven't seen any gameplay or anything like that. I just hear people saying it's good. So, that might be something to fuck with. I don't know. Coming out this summer, either way, but the most substantial announcement, Todd, as you know, was that Jedi Fallen Order got a free update that was shadow-dropped basically on May the 4th, and uh, it added some substantial content to the game. Mm -hmm. So they added what's called New Journey Plus to the game, which is a new game plus. I have not actually started this yet. I want to start it. I I still haven't started it either. Yeah, I want to start it because I want to verify this because I'm reading some mixed reports, but reportedly New Journey Plus will allow you to replay the game story with all of your cosmetics upgrades, unlock skill points, and all that shit. So I, I'm curious as to how all that works. So I do want to start it myself just to see, but... Um, we we did re- we did re- confirm that it's minus the Force abilities, though, right? I'm sure you're still going to unlock the Force abilities as the game progresses, just because it would kind of break the game if you didn't. Oh, yeah, because at that point you'd be doing... Every- you can do everything from the get-go. Yeah, but, but I think you are still going to have, like, your skill points unlocked. It's probably just gated until you unlock the... Yeah you know, the associated ability. But uh, in addition, players will have access to a slew of new cosmetic options for their lightsaber, including, yes, you you idiots finally got a red lightsaber. You pussy boys got your red saber. Finally got that. God, the amount of people that cried about that shit. Oh, it was, it was pretty bad. I think we even joked about it on the show when the game came out. So. Get magenta, you pussies. <laughs> yeah, you will get magenta. <laughs> <laughs> so there's also a Sith Inquisitor outfit, I guess, that was added for Cal. So the, they will be rocking their full edge. Full edge, Lord. I don't know if that is unlocked in New Journey Plus or what the deal is there. Yeah, I still don't know the deal with that. Yeah, I do know for sure, though, that some of these things will need to be unlocked via the new like meditation training mode. I know that there was like a BD1 skin that is gated behind that, at the very least. So, I, I, I don't know what the deal is there. But anyway, the, you access this meditation training mode 
through the game's meditation points. Essentially, there are a series of wave-based combat arena challenges with increasing difficulty across all of the different like locales in the game. By the way, more than I expected, too. How many were there? I don't even remember. I don't, I don't know, know the exact able. number. I just was I was flipping through it. It's got to be like like ten to twelve, I think. Uh, challenges. All I know is I f- all I know is I forgot how to play that game. Oh, me too. I did like the first two, and it, it definitely I was like, oh my god, I'm rusty as hell. Dude, I don't remember how to play that game worth for the life of me. Like I just like I randomly threw my saber out. I'm like, oh what? <laughs> it was pretty fucking rough. So it's they they have like these little side challenges like uh, uh like take no damage or no healing or whatever. I'm like, well, fuck you. Mm-hmm. That ain't Go gonna fuck happen. Yourself. The no damage yeah. thing that, that's definitely not gonna happen. That no damage shit's gonna be hard. Yeah, I'm not. I was now. I'll be honest. Even like when I wasn't fucking rusty, I don't think I was ever. That, I got that good at it. I mean, you can do like the, you know, you can be dashing around and, and kind of be smart about it, but it's it's going to be annoying. I, I I don't know. I don't know how, how deep I'm going to go into it, but I do know that you can actually, you can create your own custom arena challenges. Yeah, I actually respect that. Yeah, it's like a grid or some shit. Yeah, did you mess with that at all? I didn't. I do want to mess with it. Like, I do, I honestly think once I kind of like calm down on Neo 2, I might jump on that. Yeah. And fuck around. It's pretty cool for a free update, I will say. We were literally, I think, the night before, literally talking about how we yeah wish talking to about have... like, a new game plus for it. Like I would, I would definitely play it, and I definitely plan on playing it. You gonna do a new playthrough? Yeah, definitely. I, uh, I don't know, man. I, I kind of wish that they had incorporated a, um, a new trophy. You know, for playing it on new game plus. Yeah. Just something as simple as that would have been enough for me. Like just, just throw a trophy. You're a trophy whore, boy. Just, just, just a little bit of a carrot on a stick to get me to replay. You know what I mean? I don't know. You will get nothing, boy. Anyway, cool free update. It's, it's nice that they finally included this because the combat of the game is very good. I'm just gonna have to reacquaint myself Shit. with it. Dead ass. One of my favorite parts in that game is the uh, that little uh, prison arena. Yeah, that was such a cool moment in the oh, game. You, they actually released that song finally. They did. I added it to my Spotify playlist. <laughs> Bro, you know that shit is. You know that shit is on my playlist. The fuck? I didn't realize that was an original song. I thought they literally oh, no. just got. They uh, yeah, that's dead. I actually did know it was original. That's cool. Yeah, they actually contacted uh, you know, the Who. Yeah, it's funny. I was talking about it too, and because I was I was playing the song. And she's like, what the fuck is that? You know? Because <laughs> for those that don't know, the Who is like a... It's like Mongolian, like, throat singing. Yeah. But it's it's also got, like, you know, like, rock guitar and stuff like that playing with it. It's fucking good. I don't care. I just shit. <laughs> I like it. But moreover, it sounds like Star Wars alien-ass music, right? Mm-hmm. So that was kind of the that was kind of the whole thing is they worked that into a couple of moments in, in Jedi Fallen Order, and it just totally worked. Mm-hmm. So, it, but when I was describing it to her, she's like, "The Who, like, like the actual, like the band, The Who." You know, <laughs> that's who. That's who she thought I was talking about. She's like, "This is weird." You know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so that that's cool. I I probably if I make the time to do a, another playthrough, I will. But uh, speaking of EA, Todd, le- keeping in that EA realm, we got a little bit of an interesting report here about them. Uh, So they announced, first of all, that they will be holding their annual EA Play Live event digitally this year uh, in light of E3's cancellation. So EA Play Live 2020 will be taking place on June 11th at 4 p.m. Pacific. They're promising world premieres, news, and more, and it will surely be the worst live event uh, to be digitally streamed this year (laughs) because EA is always the worst. Get ready to fucking shoot myself. But I already know. Uh, you, you and I already know. I'm gonna end up watching it. <laughs> you're basically gonna like need to like send me the time so we can actually watch them together. Yep, 4 p.m. Pacific. So we'll we'll see what happens there. Now we got a little bit of insight here, which is interesting. So EA gave their investors an overview of their fiscal year, which uh, which is going to end in March 2021 where EA sort of detailed what they expect to kind of release 
during that time. They say that they're going to be releasing 14 games between now and March of next year. A lot of it is like sports games, of course, but Jeff Grubb over at Venture Beat, all hail King Grubb, uh, he reports that one of these games in question will be an HD remaster of the Mass Effect trilogy to come out this year. So that's kind of cool. Mass Effect Trilogy HD coming out this year. He does note that it will not be available on Switch immediately immediately at launch, but it will come to Switch eventually. But uh, I don't know. What do you think of that, man? Mass Effect Trilogy. <sighs> Are you going to do Garrus Dirty again? My time with those games has passed. Really? You, don't, you couldn't see yourself actually giving it a real shot? Like going back no. and giving it a real shot? My time with those games has passed. My journey. As at an end. <laughs> they all had an end. <laughs> <laughs> a horrible, gruesome end. <laughs> <laughs> I probably have, like, the worst fucking ending. <laughs> a horrible, alien drone-related end. <sighs> no, Garrus didn't deserve no! that. No! No, Gar- <laughs> <laughs> Garrus did not deserve that. You know, that that was the one time that you paid for your sins. That was the one time that you paid for your speedrun sins. (laughs) (laughs) You deserved what you got, boy. Some deaths were not bad. I don't mind grunts. How did Grunt die? Uh, He died taking down a shit ton of motherfuckers. Okay, so they gave him like a like a warrior. But but no, but you you're actually able to talk to him at the uh, the uh, talk to him as he's dying. He's like, "Good fight, Shepard. Good fight." (laughs) So they gave him like a warrior's. It wasn't like I'm theirs. like, well, that, that's, that's the thing. That was like his whole character. He just wanted a good fight. I'm like, I feel this. I'm, I like that death. I can tell that story still pretty well. <laughs> How they all died. It's all burned but, uh, into your memory. I don't Legion know, man. Died like a fucking dumbass. But yeah, I don't know, man. This is one of those like games that I'm surprised. Frankly, this trilogy HD trilogy should have come out like years ago. Yeah. Especially, like, after Andromeda was such a garbage fire. Like... What's that? No, I'm just... Yeah. I have no recollection of that game. (laughs) (laughs) After that game sort of came and went and basically single-handedly killed the franchise. Dude, that game was a drop in the bucket. I I honestly forgot about it until you just mentioned Andromeda. (laughs) I was like, what? It's weird, man. It's fucking weird. And uh, that, entire, that entire situation with that game was weird because well, I think we were even you you were calling it like from the get go. It's like something's wrong with this game. Oh, I knew I knew years before it came out that something was wrong. They talked about it way too early. We saw nothing of it, and every time they would talk about it, every E three, it's like, all right, we're finally going to get the the veil lifted on Mass Effect Andromeda, and there was just nothing. And I was just like, I'm telling you guys, something is wrong with this game. There's a reason these these companies are not stupid. They they know when to not show you something, and it's because something's fucked up. There are only two reasons why they wouldn't show you something. It's because they have nothing to show, or what they do have to show is fucked up. And with Mass Effect, it was fucked up. So, anyway, that game came and went. It would have been the perfect time to be like, hey, no, remember? Mass Effect is good. Here's, here's the trilogy, <laughs> you know? So, I, I don't know why they didn't just release that immediately after, but... Sounds like they're going to now, which is cool. Drum up a little bit of interest in the in the series. Maybe try to bring it back and make it not awful. I don't know. We'll we'll see. Um, I don't have high hopes, but I will certainly take a trilogy remaster because I love those games and I would love to replay them. I, I you know that original Mass Effect trilogy is just is so good, man. Mass Effect one, two, and three. That, that's a fantastic trilogy from a bygone era. Kind of the last real hurrah, I think, for Bioware. I think that's the kind of the, the last remnants of the good Bioware, you know? Anyway, I'll be playing it when it comes out. Moving along, Todd. Mortal Kombat 11. It's getting a paid story expansion. Did you hear about this? I did. So Now, do I care? No. Well, you know, neither one of us has played Mortal Kombat 11, so I think just innately we don't care, but I do think it sounds pretty cool. It's it's actually a first for a NetherRealm game. They've never done a story DLC expansion like this before. So pretty cool. 
Uh, it's called Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath. It will feature new story content, characters, and stages in one enormous package. So the story of Aftermath actually picks up after the events of the main game. And what's kind of cool about it is they're actually kind of primarily following the game's DLC characters from both of the combat packs. Okay. So that was kind of a complaint that a lot of people had. Like, well, this is dumb. The DLC characters are barely in the story, you know? So now they're like, okay, well, we have this story expansion that properly fleshes them out and it makes sense that they're in the game. So we're going to, we're going to have this, this DLC is going to have uh, kind of following characters from both of them. It's got Shang Tsung, Night Wolf, Fujin, Shiva, and Sindel, which kind of works those characters properly into the game's overarching story. I didn't, realize, I didn't even realize they brought the, uh, was it Fujin? I didn't even realize they brought him into the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So working them in, uh, I think it's, I think I want to say, I want to say Fujin and Sindel are both from Combat Pass 2. And uh, another one that they've added with Combat Pass 2, of course, is Robocop, which is cool. And they actually complete with uh, Frank Welker doing the voice and everything. They, they straight up have Robocop coming in. So anyway, uh, two confirmed returning stages. They're both classic MK stages, the Deadpool and the Soul Chamber. Um, we'll also see the return of stage fatalities and friendships. By the way, friendships have not been seen from in the series since 1996. So that's pretty cool. Rather than being released one at a time, the three characters from Combat Pack 2 will be released all at once as they're kind of working them, like I said, into the story of Aftermath. So, okay, so this is what it is. This is going to be Shiva, Fujin, and Robocop. Is going to be the three for Combat Pack 2. Okay. And they're, they're going to be worked into the plot of Aftermath. So, uh, this is going to be released on May 26. When it comes out, the base game is actually going to receive a free update that will give all players access to things like the new stages and friendships and stuff. If you own the base game and the first Combat Pack, you can upgrade to Aftermath and get Combat Pack 2 for $39.99. If you've got the base game and that's it, you can get the first combat pack, Aftermath, and Combat Pack 2 as a bundle for $49.99. And finally, if you don't have the game at all and you want everything, you can get it all in one bundle for $59.99. So that's kind of the way they're rolling that out. For my money, I'm kind of just like, I kind of want to play Mortal Kombat 11, but I can just wait. Like... These games, I think Injustice 2, I think you can literally get Injustice 2's Ultimate Edition with, like, everything for, like, $20. Mm. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, you can just wait a couple of years on these games and get it for just dirt cheap. And I just, you know, Aftermath is more than likely going to be, like, $30 on Black Friday. You know what I mean? I, I just don't feel the need to jump on this. As much as I do like Mortal Kombat as a series... And NetherRealm, for my money, is is the best fighting game developer out there. Yeah. Maybe if it goes on a deep discount, you and I will have to pick it up and maybe do some friendships. It's cool that they're bringing the friendships back. Have you ever seen that shit? Yeah. That's hilarious. And the, some of the new ones they showed are fucking good. It's like Scorpion, like, hugging a fucking giant teddy bear and shit. It's, it's <laughs> awesome. Anyway. Moving on. According to, again, King Grub... All Hill King Grub over at Venture Beat. Uh, Nintendo has communicated to partner developers that it will not be holding its typical Nintendo Direct in June. So this is kind of a big deal. No Nintendo Direct in June this year. This will be the first June without a Nintendo Direct since 2013. As Nintendo typically has a Direct to coincide with E3. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, because of, obviously, the complications from Corona and Japan has, like, work-from-home orders. An excuse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's kind of forced complications Nintendo. Complications from the Corona. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of forced Nintendo to push back its schedule. So, according to King Grub, uh, Nintendo was organizing and fully intending to produce a June Direct as normal, planning to unveil its first-party lineup for the remainder of 2020 which is something that has been hazy for nearly a year now. We still don't know really what's coming out for Switch beyond June. 
Uh, but it seems now like a direct may not be coming until late summer. So what do you make of that? I know you're not a big Nintendo guy. I know you've been playing your Switch a little bit more lately, but you're certainly not a huge Nintendo guy or anything like that. But I don't suck Nintendo's dick like you do now. That's true. But what do you? <laughs> but none, you know. Nonetheless, what do you? I make mean, I'm a of, little sad. I would have liked to see some like you know first party shit like from them. Right. But it is what it is. It, it's we will see it when we see it. Yeah. I'm not sitting there like a fucking fiend scratching at my fucking arm. Like, <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, real talk, I've not been like that really for another Nintendo Direct. I I, I guess, thank God for Animal Crossing, really. <laughs> it, it, it's really keeping you keeping you calm. It's keeping, keeping me you, satiated. I'm kind of just good. Yeah, keep it, keeping you sedated, you motherfucker. <laughs> right. Keep me sedated. I'm just like, I'm like, you know what? It's cool. You guys can take your time on that's, another Nintendo that's, Direct. See, uh, you, you don't realize that was their plan all along to keep you fuckers sedated. It's probably true. It's like that Ramon song, I Want to Be Sedated. That's It's it's absolutely true. When you brought up when you brought up My, my Lord and Savior King Grub, I, I was laughing. I just think th- thought back to that fucking tweet he did after that shit. <laughs> when, when he held his ground... Dude, yeah. that fucking that fucking gif had me dying. It was legendary. It was legendary. <laughs> what a legendary day for him. That that must have been. I don't you know. I don't know Jeff Grubb on a personal level, but that must have been like one of the best days of his life. Dude, the validation, dude. Just dude, that fucking that fucking gif of. I don't even know what that shit's from. It looks like some Bollywood ass shit. I, I don't know either, but it was just so funny how like he was catching all this shit left and right, and then he tweets out. <laughs> The balls on this man to go, he just tweets out, it's still happening tomorrow. <laughs> and then when it did, and it came out of absolutely nowhere, and he had that tweet of him just like, like it was like, it looked like some sort of king or something, just like walking just, through. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody fucking cheering and shit. Oh, so good. <laughs> so good. So I just, I, I gotta, you know, he's King Grub to me now. He's he's he might be the new Jason Schreier for us at this point. The Oracle. <laughs> <laughs> there there was once the Oracle, now there's King Grub. But anyway, he's he's been a pretty reliable source. Uh, but we're we're gonna have to see, man. I I don't know. I think if we were to predict, I think we're probably still gonna get the arms fighter in June. I think that's probably yeah. still gonna happen. But uh, it, it sounds like we might not get a Nintendo Direct until like July or August. You know what I mean? So, I guess we'll see. Luckily, I'll be playing Animal Crossing until the day I die, so Nintendo is safe. Speaking of Nintendo, uh, they have revealed updated Switch hardware and software sales numbers for their investors this week, which kind of details to the end of their fiscal year, which ended on March 31st. Now, unfortunately, this means that we still don't know the true scope of the Animal Crossing New Horizons sales, since this is only accounting for the game's first 11 days on market. Because mm. it released on March 20th. This only accounts up until March 31st. However, with that being said, in 11 days, the game still managed to sell 11.77 million units. Shit. So that's over a million units sold per day on market. <laughs> so yeah, that game sold pretty well. And I don't even want to know what, this, what the figures look like now that we're you know, in May. I still say it was the perfect storm, these bastards in quarantine. It was. Absolutely was. Uh, As for hardware, the Switch itself has now sold 55.77 million units, which surpasses the SNES's lifetime sales, and it's fast approaching the NES's lifetime sales. Uh, And Nintendo says they expect to sell another 19 million units by uh, next fiscal year. So pretty ballsy. By the way, this almost certainly, we have no way of knowing the Xbox One's lifetime sales because Microsoft does not talk about hardware sales. By all accounts, they've sold about 60 million Xbox Ones. So in in three years, Nintendo has pretty much either matched or outsold Xbox One. I'm not surprised by that. Nintendo, by the way, says that the Switch is, they they had a little statement today where they said... uh, the Switch is not even halfway through its life cycle. So mm-hmm. we've still got plenty more years of Switch to come. 
blessedly. So that's cool. Cool to see that information. Let's kind of, as we wind down the show here, we've got a couple of big things to talk about here uh, as we're kind of ending the show, but, but, but not quite ending the show. All right. Two more news bits here. So first there was Nintendo direct. Then there was PlayStation state of play. And now there's Xbox 2020. In a blog post on Xbox.com, Microsoft communicated a few details of their strategy moving forward with Xbox Series X. Basically, they reiterated that the Series X and Halo Infinite as a launch title are still planned to release this holiday. But they also announced Xbox 2020, which essentially is a monthly Xbox news drop video that will focus on different things each month throughout the rest of the year. So... The video that we watched today was technically the first Xbox 2020. And the the focus of this one was uh, kind of focusing on the first look at next-gen gameplay. So let's kind of talk about that. Let's talk about what we saw. Uh, We watched it together live on Twitch. Jeff Keighley's stream with a super good camera. And his lack of knowledge of OBS. (laughs) Yeah, he was super quiet. Dude, his camera was like fucking so good. You could see all the gray hairs and pores. And it's I, like, look how old you've become. Yeah, look <laughs> at how old you've become. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So we watched his stream on there, and that was kind of cool. But let, let's just talk about some of the stuff that was shown. Uh, Jeff Keeley kind of set the expectations low <laughs> before and the stream even started. That's a good thing he did. But before, but I do, I do, I want to shit on like. Why the fuck did every single one of these other motherfuckers that showed up on the Xbox video, the most dog shit setups? Yeah, so basically how it was, was we had a lot of people who, you know, a lot of Xbox employees basically that would pop in with their webcams. Yeah, just dead, it's like webcam mics too, fucking pussies. <laughs> awful video quality, awful audio quality. You called out the fact that there had to be like an Xbox controller. In the background, <laughs> yeah, every the one, single one the of one them. The one that had me dying. What the fuck was her name? Sarah Bond or some shit? Yeah, it's like it was like they, no one would I keep a controller in that spot. <laughs> she had it in like a little like basket on her dresser or something like look, that. It, look, it looked dumb as shit. It's like nobody has an Xbox controller. I, I was like, I was like, seriously, was this like in the memo? Like, make sure you get an Xbox controller in the shot because every single so one bad. of them had something like that. Yeah. Anyway, I was even telling you though. I was, I was like, you know, if I were Microsoft, I would like send out. By the way, these are these are like PC hardware manufacturers. They make webcams. They make microphones. Like, like send them some good shit. Like send them have some, some quality shit. behind this. You know. Yeah, have like, some good quality. Like fucking dude, Killy, 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 uh, killed it with the quality. Camera okay. was good. Great. His mic camera. was good once he realized how to raise the gain. Mic was great. I mean, he was. You know, of course, he was. Learning OBS, which I don't think anybody ever truly learns OBS. Real shit, preach. <laughs> but uh, so he's having a little bit of issue with that. But his his actual gear was shit. about as high quality as you can get. You know, Bro, I so, need a webcam like that. That's fucking amazing. That was a great webcam. So anyway, we watched his stream. Let's kind of go over some of the stuff we saw. Again, he he set the expectation low, letting us know that there would be no first party reveals or any sort of anything like that. So no Halo, nothing like that. So we knew that going in. We knew this is going to be all third-party stuff, which was fine. Uh, he sort of said, like, hey, don't expect any, like, megaton announcements. But there's still some stuff that I think was kind of exciting here. Yeah, there was some some cool shit in there. So we started off with this weird-ass-looking game called Bright Memory Infinite. Game looks fun as hell. Which looks really cool. It looked like, you know, we, we it looked really pretty. It's a first-person shooter. It looked like Crisis to me when it started. It did look like Crisis, yeah. But it's in this weird, like, kind of ancient Asian setting. But it's not. Like a feudal Japan setting. But it's but it's not. <laughs> yeah, and then we saw, like, uh, there, there's like a, a wrist grappling hook that so the player the has. Cyber, there's like a cyborg, cybernetic-looking katana. The katana didn't look like a normal katana. It was like this, like, fucking cyber katana in a weird way and he was fighting like people that looked like they were like spartans with like sword and shields yeah and yeah there was a moment when there was like a fucking like race car that like appeared 
It's like, what the fuck? It's like, what is this game? <laughs> then you find out it's only it's made by like one dude. You're like, oh shit. Yeah, and then it says like, yeah, this is being made by one guy. It's like, whoa. This this is an indie game? <laughs> like, excuse me? So we don't know much about it. No release date or anything like that. It's it's still just in development footage, but damn. I mean, it looked look cool. cool. Yeah, look Worst cool title. That. Worst title you Worst could probably ever all. have, but Bright Memory Infinite. Like, what the fuck does that even mean? Uh, maybe it'll maybe it'll make perfect sense when we uh, finally see it. We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the next thing we saw was Dirt 5, which, you know, I don't really care about the Dirt series, uh, really. but... Yeah, it's Dirt 5, guys. <laughs> Apparently, so, so something that they did say about this was that, so the Xbox Series X, you can have 4K resolution and uh, FPS up to 120. Um, they were saying that you can kind of choose what you want to do. You can either choose playing in 4K at 60 or 1080 at 120, basically. Shit, I probably do. T- I would technically do the 1080 uh, at 120. I would too, personally, if I had, if I had the choice, I, you know, but... I, I don't know. I, I'm more of a performance guy than a graphics guy, so as long as the game runs well, I'm happy. Still, it's cool. I mean, 120 FPS is not something that's been possible on a console before. You yeah. Know, ever. So that that's pretty cool. Uh, we got a new kind of trailer for Scorn, which was I, disturbing. I, I genuinely forgot about that game. I forgot about it, too, until we kind of started to look at it. It's like, oh, right. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, Scorn's a thing. No, just fucking seeing art style of that game. Fuck. Seeing that disturbing art style. It's disturbing as shit, dude. Yeah. The game itself disturbs me. I want to play it. <laughs> <laughs> I even, it was it was hilarious because this happened twice during this where I called out something that I that I, I recognized. Mean, I mean, yeah, but it's like that's re- that's like really in your face though. Yeah, I was one. like I was like some HR Geiger ass shit, and then I I saw. The official Xbox Twitter account tweeted about it and it was like, uh, taking inspiration from HR Geiger. I was like, oh, all right. It, see, my, my my thing is like, what? No way. No. Yeah. Like, oh, you don't say. It's like that shocked Pikachu face, basically. Yeah. Uh, so this was one of the ones that really stood out to me. Call of the Sea. Yeah. Yeah. That definitely uh, looked interesting. This was a really, really pretty stylized, kind of looked like it was taking place in like the 1930s. Um, kind of like explore, kind of an exploration puzzle game on like a on like a deserted island, looking for mm-hmm. her husband or something. And we saw this weird shot at the end of the trailer where it's right first person, end. right at the end, yeah, underwater, and you see like basically like a mermaid, mer- like merman hand. Yeah, you're you're swimming. It looks like, and yeah, the hands are finned. They have like yeah. like webbed fingers. Well, dude, I actually I I noticed something actually in the trailer. I don't know if you did too. Is the hand thing like to put your hand like it was like to activate something? Uh huh. That was weird looking too. Really, I didn't notice that. It, it wasn't a human hand. I mean, it was humanoid, but it technically wasn't a human hand. Interesting. And even the way she, I think the way she put it, it was almost in a kind of a webbed sort of way. So there, there's gonna be some weird shit going on with that game. I'm definitely intrigued by that game. I'm all about it. Looks really cool. But again, we like most of these games, we, we don't really know much about it. We also learned about this game, I guess it's called Chorus. Which yeah, it's not my cup of tea, but yeah. Not really my cup of tea either. Um, apparently it's not coming until next year. I mean, it looks pretty. We can say that. The game looks pretty. I mean, yeah, the game definitely looked pretty, but it's just it's a flight sim, essentially. I don't know that it is a flight sim. It, to <sighs> me, it looks more arcadey. To me, it looks like... Like a really pretty Star Fox, basically. Yeah, that's actually a good way to look at it. I don't look at it. It just didn't look like it was going for hyper Def- realism. It seems like well, it seems like it's definitely gonna have a fucking story to it too. Yeah, they they had one. like some like like protagonist. I wasn't really paying attention to what was going on. Then there was like a weird shot with some dude behind like fucking like weird glass or some shit. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't wasn't know, super. I, paying I just didn't attention. know what the, I I, I kind of like zoned out a little bit because I'm like I don't really care about this. I already know I'm not going to play this. <laughs> right, right. It was pretty, if nothing else. So uh, there is a co-op game about fighting dinosaurs called Second Extinction. Reclaim Earth. Yeah. So that's that's a thing that 
looks uh, made by the uh, Avalanche guys or like one of their like little sub studio shit, right? Yeah, it's like a sub studio of Avalanche up there. I think in Sweden is where they're from. So that's you know, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I like Avalanche, but we'll see, yeah, might be something to look out for. Now, this is another one that I was really interested in: the Ascent. Yeah, that actually caught my attention as well. Which is made by an indie team. Jeff Keeley was saying an indie ten man team. Based, uh, I guess they were uh, ex Wolfenstein developers. Mm-hmm. They used to work at Machine Games, and it's like they're they're describing it. We we don't know much about it, but they're describing it as a cyberpunk RPG. Mm-hmm. Does have co op confirmed, and it's like a top down like isometric shooter. And uh, I was I was telling you as you're watching, I was like, I just hope that this game has a loop a to loop. it. It yeah. needs a good loop. It needs a gear loop. It needs a skill loop or something. You know what I mean? Other than that, I mean, it looked fun. It had my attention. I liked the world. Like, I liked the, the art and everything. Well, and I think I think just the idea of it is going to be cool because, again, you're going to the upper levels where, like, the fucking the good people live, you know? Right. Right. Start from the bottom. Now we're here. No? Looks cool. It, I, I hope – what I really hope is that this is, like, a story-based – kind of diablo yeah. style thing i don't want it to be like a fucking like not another roguelike you know what i mean yeah we'll we'll, we'll see this is definitely something i'm going to be keeping God. my eye on that's a that's a thing it's too many roguelikes nowadays yeah yeah I, I, i'm gonna be keeping my eye on it we'll see what not happens another roguelike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is uh so this one maybe the one i'm most interested in is the medium yeah and that was the, i think that was the worst uh Hit it right on the nail moment. Well, yeah, so as this trailer starts, we're hearing a musical track, and I, you know, as you all know, if you listen to the show for a long time, I'm a huge video game music nerd, and I thought that this was Silent Hill, because I was like, this straight up sounds like Akira Yamaoka. Well, it, it also didn't help that it just the trailer itself had some very Silent Hill vibes. Right. And maybe that is essentially what they are going for, but obviously... There, there's been a lot of like you know rumblings about maybe Silent Hills coming back, blah blah blah. So I was like, is this, is this straight up Silent Hill? Because in the trailer we see it's basically this woman who is pregnant, I guess, in the trailer, and then it's like some psychological shit. Pregnant. She's not pregnant. <laughs> she's a medium, right? So I'm, I'm guessing that she's like taking on the feeling of a pregnant woman from somebody else, maybe or whatever. And then like you know, cut to the next scene where she's like stabbing herself. And there's like this weird, like upside down world type shit. Yeah, I get a little like other other world uh, type of shit going on. Other world stuff. Obviously a horror game. Obviously going for the Silent Hill, heavy Silent Hill influence. Down to the down to the music, and I called that out. I was like, it sounds like a Kiriyamoka. He just has such a unique mm-hmm. musical identity. It just sounded like 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 him. And it was funny because the second that you know one of the developers came on camera. And yeah, we're just, working close with. <laughs> yeah, we're working closely with. Uh, we're we're collaborating with Akira Yamaoka on the sound. I was like, oh, cool, slam dunk. <laughs> this is a, hilarious. There we go. So, that game looks cool. I'm uh, I'm definitely excited to learn more. That's from, I think they're called Bloober as the developer. Some show, yeah, yeah. They're the uh, they're the makers of like Observer and Blair Witch and Layers of Fear. Pretty well regarded. Uh, horror indie studio. So definitely going to be keeping an eye on that. Uh, we got a little look of Madden NFL 21. Uh, moving along. You're dumb. <laughs> you're fucking dumbass. Yeah. So when this started, that's funny. We should talk about that. When the, when the trailer started, <laughs> apparently what happened is it was showing footage from previous Madden games. Dude, they started from like the original Madden, bro. I'm surprised you didn't even realize that. No, I, I straight up, as soon as the trailer started, I, I cared so little that I was just <laughs> looking at my phone. <laughs> and he started watching it again. It was like maybe like a Madden from like eight years ago, maybe. When I looked I up, know. I'm just like, this looks like shit. I was like, is this? I was like, is this really what the game looks like on Series X? This looks like fucking shit. I was like, th- there's no reason this game should look this bad. This is a sports game. These games should look real by this point. Oh, f- and then finally we get a little glimpse of what it actually looks like. And it looks well, I good. even told you, I'm like, no, they're just showing off old Madden's, bro. <laughs> it's like, oh, my bad. I didn't realize. Uh, something I'm excited about. We got a little, uh, 
We got a little trailer for Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, which has been kind of long in development. There's actually a pretty extensive, if you go on YouTube, there's like a 40 minute gameplay demo for this game. Oh, is it really? Damn. Yeah, that you can watch if you, that came out like a year and change ago, if you, if you want to see some expansive gameplay for the game. And, and the trailer was cool. Uh, this, it was not much to say other than that. I, I'm excited for this. It's, it's looking stylish. It's looking sleek. Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. There's really not much to say. I really enjoyed the first Bloodlines, so you already know I got to do my Nosferatu playthrough. So, uh, Scarlet Nexus, a weeb game, Todd, from our friends over at Bandai Namco, a weeb game for you. We don't really know much about it. We just know that there are some brooding anime boys and girls, some uh, some futuristic. Katanas and psyo, like psionic powers and like weird flower plant enemies. Looks weird. The art style looks cool. I'll say that. But uh, but otherwise, I'm not super interested. How about you? Yeah, it's, it's weeby. That's about it. S- Scarlet Nexus doing anything for you? Not really. <laughs> this was kind of cool. So Yakuza like a dragon. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, this is already out in Japan on PS4. Okay. Uh, it's it's kind of an RPG focused Yakuza game, and it's it's like super over the top. Like we saw like a giant like lobster at some point in the game, like fucking like laser beams and like really hardcore like particle effects. <laughs> It was it was really weird. It looked very over the top and interesting. I just wasn't sure. I was like, is this a Yakuza game or is this like something made by the? It was very clearly made by the Yakuza team. You can just kind of tell the yeah. visual the visuals of it. it. It looked like a Yakuza game and felt like a Yakuza game, but I didn't know if it actually would be. And it is. It's a straight up Yakuza little spinoff game, I guess. And uh, it's coming out for Xbox One and Series X, I guess. So. Looks cool. I uh, I like the Yakuza games from the little bit that I've played. So we're gonna. So Microsoft is doing that smart delivery thing where it's talking about where if you buy a game on Xbox One, you're also gonna have it on Series X. So Microsoft did detail the games that are supporting this. So Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, Call of the Sea, Chorus, Scarlet Nexus, Second Extinction, The Ascent. Uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 and Yakuza Like a Dragon will all be delivered uh, via smart delivery. So if you buy those games on Xbox One, you will still be entitled to the Series X version if you get one. Mm -hmm. So that's a thing. No word yet on if Sony is going to be doing this or not. Uh, Sony has confirmed that with Assassin's Creed Valhalla... If you buy it on PS4, you can get the PS5 upgrade for free. But they have not announced like an official program for this uh, coming into PS5's launch. So we don't really mm. know anything about that. That's We don't really know a lot. <laughs> yeah. Now, before we move on to the, to the final topic of the show, I do want to talk for just a second about Microsoft's sort of strategy. This, this is the first we've heard from Microsoft in a little while. And I just find it a little bit odd that they didn't come out with a swinging dick. You know what I mean? Like, for me, I'm like, if you're wanting to introduce this new Xbox 2020 initiative, you, you kind of have to come out swinging, and I don't feel like this was it. You know? Yeah. This didn't really no, do I, all I, that much. I I was left, like, pretty disappointed. It didn't really do all that much for me. I would have liked to see some Halo or, or something. And even the, even the whole big thing was, oh, you're going to see Assassin's Creed Valhalla gameplay, and we didn't even really get that. Yeah, that that was weird to me. How this is a weird strategy to me. I, and, and you know, I was talking with Dan about this the other day, where uh, I was like, you know, for for Microsoft's part, y- you have two different camps, right? Where with Sony, they have a lot to be worried about with Microsoft mm-hmm. because Microsoft has like they they they've been saying even here, even during this event, they're like, oh, we have fifteen you know studios working hard on Xbox. Series X exclusives, and we're going to be talking about that in July, and you got to imagine Sony's scared of that, but at the same time, what we have to consider, Todd, is that these are new IP, and so they have more to prove, 
these new IP coming out, like, are we really going to give a shit? Of course, they're going to care about Halo. Of course, they're going to care about, like, Hellblade 2 and stuff like that. But all these other studios that are just kind of going to be making, like, brand new IP for Series X, they've got a lot to prove to us. And Sony's studios just don't really have to do that. Like, Mm. Sony has all these baked in. If Sony releases PS5 and they've got a new Ratchet ready, if they have Horizon 2 ready, they've already got a better launch than Microsoft could possibly have. You know what I mean? So that's kind of interesting to me that Microsoft has to kind of grow their brand in a way that Sony doesn't. You know, Sony's just been in the game longer, obviously. It has more valuable IP. I think Sony does have a lot to worry about, but at the same time, I'm I'm sort of thinking to myself, when I'm actually considering how valuable those new studios actually are that Microsoft's been acquiring, it's like, well, none of these studios have the weight that Sony Studios do. When you think Mm. of Sony Studios, you're talking about Naughty Dog, Gorilla, Insomniac, Sucker Punch. These are all studios that are like 20 plus years in the game. Yeah. And have like storied histories and stuff like that. And Microsoft basically has like Halo and Gears as legacy IP. And the rest is all mm-hmm. brand new shit. Yeah. They, they shit canned Fable. I don't know. They're, they're, there's just not a lot uh, going on like with, with, with legacy IP coming out of Microsoft. And that worries me. There have been rumors, of course, of Fable 4 being a thing. We'll see about that. But. I just feel like they just kind of have Halo. We're not going to be getting Gear 6 anytime soon, you know? So yeah, that's some real shit. I'm a little bit worried about that with, with Microsoft. I, I feel like, and of course, Sony, you know, they're kind of blowing their load. Sucker Punches and Naughty Dog are both coming up to bat right now. You know, they're probably going to have Horizon ready for, if not at launch, for launch window. And I'm sure next year we're going to get Spider-Man too. But I don't know, man. We're just going to have to see. Yep. Anyway. This this would never have been a problem if Microsoft just uh, doubled down on Blinks the Time Sweeper. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you remember that shit? I do. I was thinking about Blinks the Time Sweeper. I I, <laughs> I remember talking with Dan like fucking like ten years ago, where Dan was like, "How come Microsoft never had like a fucking a furry mascot?" Basically, <laughs> they tried. Yeah. Nintendo's got their little mascot with Mario and holy shit, I forgot about the time sweeper. I'm looking at him right now. <laughs> and and Dude, they re- they went for like this Cheshire like Cheshire like cat sort of look. He has a weird design. Them. I actually enjoyed that game. I remember liking that game. Ninety three percent of people like this game apparently. How many? On of Google users. Holy shit! Has a five out of five of it on GameStop. Really? A 71% Metacritic. It didn't... Re- I'm looking at the review spread here on uh, on its Wikipedia page. It didn't review that bad. I liked the game. It just... I almost feel like if, if Microsoft had doubled down on Blinks... Like, I'm, I am I said that facetiously a second ago. <laughs> but now the, you kind of mean it. <laughs> the Blinks could have been, you know, Blinks the Time... Su- more like Blinks the Time Savior, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> I'm even looking literally there is a section on Blinks's Wikipedia. Here's the Blinks tangent here. Uh literally on it's a, on It's the, a tangent I didn't ask for, but yes, continue. <laughs> <laughs> even on the Wikipedia page, Blinks as a mascot. GameSpy suggests that Blinks was proposed as a possible mascot for the Xbox system, rivaling Nintendo's Mario, Sega's Sonic the Hedgehog, and Sony's Crash Bandicoot. And since the main character of Halo Combat Evolved was considered too violent, and the officials wanted a friendly, furry face to lead the sales among a lo- younger clientele. Due to the game's unpopularity, it never achieved the suggested goal, and Master Chief is unofficially seen as the Xbox mascot, though Blinks was in fact proposed uh, as the mascot for the Xbox in Japan for a while. Blinks could have been something, man. Blinks, Blinks could have oh. had it all. You know what? It belongs to Master Chief now. <laughs> I want to end the show, Todd, by talking about what is probably my most anticipated game of the year thus far, and that is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Mm, serenade me with, with beautiful things. Last week we talked about it. It was properly revealed last week, but we didn't really get any concrete details on the game. We got like that first trailer, but that was about it. Yeah. Now we've seen gameplay... 
or their their what? shitty idea of gameplay. Gameplay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was that not just a cinematic trailer. No. <laughs> it was they they saw oh, in engine footage. Oh, Sorry, go guys. Fuck yourself. That does nothing for me in engine footage. That's horse shit. It is horse shit. I wanted to see I an actual to see demo. Legitimate gameplay. That's what I wanted to see, honestly. I wanted to see actual gameplay. I wanted to like, see a demo. You. I wanted to see somebody playing the game for like 10 minutes. But anyway, we do know some more details about Assassin's Creed that, that just have me even more excited. And I want to go over some of it. Uh, I want I want you to be as excited about this game as I am, Todd. Let me Let me see if I can amp you up to my levels here. So... There are over a dozen Ubisoft studios that are contributing to this game, but it is mm. primarily being made by, I, I'm going to go, I uh, apologize, I'm going to go with Ashraf Ismail. Uh, I hope I'm not mispronouncing that too bad. Uh, and his team over there at Ubisoft Montreal, who was responsible for uh, Black Flag and Origins. Uh, Origin, okay. Origins, of course, was the game that essentially rebooted Assassin's Creed. So it's him and his team primarily oh. behind this. So Okay. Black Flag and Origins are some of the best Assassin's Creed games. So, that's cool. Uh, the game's protagonist is named Eivor. Uh, Eivor can indeed be male or female. Don't uh, don't let the fans know that, though, because they're all butthurt. <laughs> Why isn't the female in the trailer? I swear to God, dude. That's, that's all I saw <laughs> after that shit hit. It was like, God. God, God damn it. They, they can't. What are they going to do? Do both? Like, what are they going to, like, shift I, focus uh, between both male and female during the course of the trailer? Transition mid-trailer. mid, mid trailer. <laughs> Stupid. Anyway. Uh, like most Assassin's Creed protagonists, Eivor will have a bird companion in the form of a raven, which is, of course, appropriate, considering yeah, the appropriate subject so. matter. I'm telling yep. you, this game is going to have Odin as an actual character, and I'm telling you fucking what, that raven is probably just deadass going to be one of Odin's ravens. Oh. <sighs> Just literally, I bet you that's literally just going to be what the deal is. <laughs> You're going to have this raven bird companion, then towards the end of the game, it's going to be revealed that, oh, this is one of Odin's ravens the whole time. Fuck. So, that's my prediction. Odin is with <laughs> Odin is with us! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Valhalla will, of course, see the return of RPG mechanics, like a skill tree and... Uh, player customization is a huge focus. Uh, the player is going to be able to customize Eivor's hair, facial hair, clothing, tattoos, and war paint. Uh, Todd, you might be surprised to know that I'm actually going to be playing as the male Eivor in this game. Uh, I know. <laughs> I, I know, boy. I, I typically go for the female characters, but I mean, if I can customize my beard, I just, I gotta play as the female are the uh, the male Avor? <laughs> I gotta. I still yeah. gotta play as the female. I gotta play as the female with a beard. I wonder if they'll let you do that. Be a female rocking a beard. Uh, if if they can, if they confirm that, I might change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Bearded lady. But uh, but no, players can actually. This is something I didn't know. Players can even customize Viking raiders for their raiding parties. I'm gonna make them. I'm gonna make them big fat boys. You can, and you. You could even we can share our custom raiders with each other if we wanted to. Yes, so I will make a big fat boy and send him to you. <laughs> he will lead your charge. <laughs> <laughs> he will. He will be by my side. <laughs> His name will be Bulbous. No, <laughs> what was it? Bulbous? His name will be Bulbous. <laughs> yes, I love it. Uh, you're going to be able to create a home base for yourself and your other Vikings, which is actually going to be a huge focus of the game. It's going to be about like building up your clan and your, your clan settlement and stuff. Uh, a large part of the story involves Eivor leading their people out of Norway and into England to settle, which is obviously a big part of actual history. Feels mm -hmm. like every fucking Viking story ever told is about this, by the way. It's like that show Vikings was about this. <laughs> like... Every can't we just tell a Viking story that's not about invading England? Well, guess what? Fuck the British. No. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they are. They are being met with plenty of a uh, British opposition when they arrive. So, uh, the game's map is going to include Norway itself as well as the four kingdoms of ninth century England, which in, is Wessex, Northumbria, East yes. Anglia, and Mercia. Yeah. Yep. Um. 
They, that is correct. No, <laughs> they have said, which which was music to my ears, that the game will be smaller than Odyssey. Uh, kind of addressing the complaints that Odyssey was a little too bloated, which, look, I loved Odyssey. Um, Odyssey was too bloated. It was way too big. Too much to do, so I'm glad that this is going to be scaled back a little bit. And, of course, at some point after arriving in England, uh, Eivor will uh, run across a group of assassins. So, player choice is going to factor heavily into the game's story. Players will make political decisions, have dialogue choices, make personal alliances. And actually, a good example of that is you're going to be able to arrange marriages to unite Viking clans. Oh, that's cool. So, you're going to be arranging marriages, unite your Viking clan with another, kind of build your strength. There will also be romance options available for Eivor themselves. That's cool. Odyssey had some romance options too. I basically fucked anybody I could in Odyssey. I know you did. That was my whole thing. My Cassandra was definitely a uh, a Greek lover, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> my Eivor will too fuck anything that agrees to it. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, the game's combat is said to have seen an overhaul, which is exciting. There's a focus on what they say. They say the focus of this is making every hit feel impactful. Ooh, okay. Like, a, give, a, give a weight to it, okay. Yeah, so they this includes being able to decapitate and dismember your enemies. Yes. Which is cool. Continue. We, we kind of talked about this as we were watching it, because in past games, uh, you've been able to wield two weapons at once, but Valhalla will actually allow you to mix and match your arsenal, which is cool. Two shields. You could do two shields in theory. Two shields. I am the wall. <laughs> in theory, you could do it. Uh, shields will be returning after being absent in Odyssey, so that's cool. You think I'm fucking playing? Nah, bro. Be the wall. <laughs> be the wall. The wall. <laughs> One of my all-time favorite fucking videos. So good. And, uh, and of course, as we saw in the reveal trailer, the iconic Hidden Blade is also making its return. That makes me happy. At least it's actually not like uh, underneath. It's actually on the top. Todd, your favorite part of these mm. games, naval combat, is returning. <laughs> <laughs> you you are in the minority in that. Most people enjoy the naval stuff in these I games. I fucking hate it. <laughs> I hate it. I fucking hate it with a passion. I really like it. You're a bitch. <laughs> I mean, I'm wondering how, how much it's going to change. This is the team that actually literally created the naval combat with Black Flag. So, I mean, I guess three had it, but th they really kind of perfected it with Black Flag. So, we'll, we'll see if they overhaul it to, to your liking. Maybe you'll like it a little bit more on this one. I don't know. I won't. I can bet money that I won't. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Don't speak out of turn. You haven't, you haven't played the game. Uh, you know. I will not. No. <laughs> We, you got to have a wait and see approach with these things, Todd. Maybe you'll enjoy your Viking longship and your raids and shit like that. I'll enjoy the raiding aspect when I hit the ground. <laughs> yeah, apparently that's going to be a thing. You'll you'll be you know doing your naval traversal. You'll be able to spot fortresses from afar and set up a large scale raid on these fortresses Good. whenever you want. Good. <laughs> In terms of open world activities, you can go hunting. You can do fishing. Uh, there are dice and drinking games, but most importantly, Todd, this this we need to stop and talk about this because this was what really shot this game's hype into the stratosphere for me. The player will be able to engage in the competitive sport of flighting or Viking rap battles. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes! Dude, I'm, I'm so fucking excited for that. Are you kidding me? I can have a Viking rap battle? I went down the rabbit hole, by the way, of flighting. I bet you did. I was always familiar somewhat with the term, but I didn't realize that. No, seriously, Vikings invented rap battles, you guys. That's, that's some real shit. Flighting is a ritualistic, poetic exchange of insults. That Vikings practiced between the 5th and 16th centuries. Early examples are, are in like Norse and Celtic culture. And they wrote like stories about like the most famous one is like Loki insulting the other gods. Mm -hmm. 
um, and actually engages in a in a fighting match against Thor. I'm just like, dude, like this is so fucking cool. I think fighting actually means to quarrel. So we're gonna get into fucking. We're gonna be MC Avor, dude. We're gonna get into fucking Viking rap battles. They're gonna play us a beat. Oh, I'm so. No, that's gonna be good. I'm so excited. I hope that there's an entire Viking rap battle chain. I want to build my Viking rap career in this game. <laughs> I want to be known across the world of this game for my like legendary flighting skills. As little Avor, no. <laughs> yeah, little Avor. <laughs> <laughs> I want them to I want people to challenge me to rap battles. Like I want to be going around like I want it to be like fucking like uh like Shadow of Mordor. <laughs> Where you're going around and you encounter somebody that you fucking beat in a rap battle. Like, you remember me? Asshole Did face. I tell you that I I fucking love that shit in, in that game. So good. Like, dude, the, the motherfuckers that have come back, like, 20 times from the death, from, you know, from, like, you've killed them, like, 20 fucking times. Yeah, like, iron it's plates like, in their head and shit. <laughs> it's like, it's like, how many times I gotta teach you this lesson, old man? <laughs> yeah. I want that, but with the rap battle system. That's what I want. I feel that. I want them to come after me, and they just want to rap battle me again and again. How do you think that's gonna work mechanically? I don't know. Maybe it's gonna be like uh, dialogue options that you gotta like have a timed response to it. Yeah, I wonder if they're gonna like. It would be really interesting if they if they you gave gotta be you quick on it. I, I I think you're gonna they're gonna give multiple dialogue options, and you got like maybe like a cut like maybe a second to fucking do it. Well, here's here's what they should do is they should have dialogue options that are popping up as the other person is delivering their rap. Yeah. So that it kind of replicates the player thinking of their comeback, right? Mm-hmm. So dialogue options are popping up, and maybe you kind of build a rap with that. Okay, I like that. Yeah, it's gotta it's it's gotta be quick though. You gotta actually have to like be on your toes with it. I think you, That'd be you, the, the only way it could work. There's gonna be I, you should have like a timer that is ticking down so that you know how long this person's gonna be rapping for, and as the opponent is rapping, you're constructing your comeback. And you have until the end of their verse to respond with your own verse. Oh, man, that'd be so fucking cool. I would play an entire game just of this, by the way. (laughs) Straight up, I would play an entire game that was just about being a Viking rap battle lord. That's all I want. Uh, That that right there, when I learned about that, I was already hyped for the game. But when I learned that I'm going to be able to fucking rap battle... Uh, it was. It became stratospheric, Todd. <laughs> the hype, stratospheric. I hope there's a trophy related to it too. By the way. Oh my god, I'm so pumped for she this game. Trophy would just better just be called MC Avor. <laughs> yeah. Holy moly! I can't wait. Uh, anyway, we don't have a firm release date for this game yet, but it is releasing this holiday on current gen consoles as well as next gen consoles and Stadia. Remember Stadia? What is that? <laughs> That's a thing. Stadia. I feel like I've, I've heard of that before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I said, uh, the game is going to be a part of the Smart Delivery Initiative. And again, PlayStation has also confirmed that if you own it on PS4, you can upgrade to the PS5 copy for free. I'm mostly just going to wait. To to be real, like I'm just going to wait until I have my PS5. That's, yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm actually going to do the same. It's probably not going to be that big of a time difference anyway. These games typically come out in like late October, early November, and that's probably about when the PS5 is going to come out anyway. So I'll just yeah. wait and have a good launch game on my PS5. Real shit. We don't know what the PS5's launch details are yet. We probably won't until later on, but uh, but I'm just gonna I'm honestly just gonna twiddle my thumbs and hold off, and when I get my PS5 home. I will literally head straight to the store and download my copy of uh, Valhalla, and that'll be my launch game. It'll be my savior in the PS5's launch, just as Black Flag was for the PS4's launch. We will come full circle. Anyway, so hyped for that game. Where's your hype level at? Where does that compare with the other games that we know about this year? Uh, It's probably one of my more hyped games. Probably, uh... I don't even know, like, what else I'm hyped for. So, yeah, it is probably my most hyped game. <laughs> oh, no, Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It, you know, 
this is some real shit. As the Xbox presentation was starting and they were talking about, oh, it's all third parties, I was like, oh, maybe we'll see Elden Ring. Nope. Yeah. They teased me with they teased me with a splash page of uh developers. <laughs> yeah, they did say like, oh, these are all the developers making Xbox games and From was on there, of course, and like we know that Elden Ring is a thing, we just haven't seen anything from it, and you gotta assume other that the than, game is far along. Other than that fucking asinine nothing of a teaser. Uh so I, I I would like to think that we're gonna at least hear some more about that game this year, but I don't know, man. I don't know. That would have been the perfect thing to have in this presentation. That that honestly would have would have done a lot to save the presentation. But anyway, <laughs> some dude on Twitter angry vlogging from my car every day until more Elden Ring footage is shown. Day one, <laughs> pretty much. Anyway, Todd, that's what I got this week. Do you have anything else you want to add before we wrap it up? Uh, mm, skate four. <laughs> I respect it. <laughs> I respect it. Viking rap battles, Todd. That is all. Thanks for listening, folks. We'll catch you next week. Get fucking dunked on. Bye. See ya.